your arms around me Don't ever let me go Hold me to you So I can see the light of day You tell me that you love me In the words that Jesus spoke I'm safe in your arms Safe in your arms The kingdom come and We are standing at the cross With our hands raised to our God We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah Praise you, Lord of heaven. I sing your holy name. I'm closer to you so I can dwell within your heart. And you were there before me. You rescued me from shame. You died on the cross, gave of your life, and rose again. We are standing at the cross With our hands raised to our God We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah worships you through all the ages it's been true we are standing at the cross with our hands raised to our Sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah to our God. God, there are times when I feel like nothing. I feel like I can give nothing. I feel broken. I feel like everything that I might even try is just going to fail. Spirituality is such a, a deep, deep part of who I am and who everybody is. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will bless us today. And I allow your Holy Spirit into the spaces that may be feeling broken in the places that may be feeling empty in the places that may be feeling overwhelmed 
and I pray that your Holy Spirit will be gentle to us and that we'll feel that joy and feel that love and feel that belonging soaking from our toes all the way up and out through our fingers filling us up with that feeling of satisfaction and that feeling of being and that feeling that it's going to be okay no matter what happens but together with the Holy Spirit that we can do anything survive anything I mean even if we fall apart during the process but even even so we will be okay because there's always repentance there's always forgiveness there's always blessing there's always relief there's always that hug there's always that time of reconciliation that time of feeling like it's safe again Lord help us to live in that joy wherever we can to not let the brokenness be who we are but to see the good to just be in whatever place we are and just to know that with you everything is okay amen amen So Des, I want to just hand it over to you to tell me why you love the gospel. Peter, thank you. There's no greater privilege than to proclaim the good news that William Tyndale said was good, glad and merry tidings that makes the heart to sing and the feet to dance, that convinces us that God is willing to accept the unacceptable that is kind to the evil and the ungrateful, Luke 6, that whosoever comes to him, he'll in no wise cast out, that despite the fact in many things we all offend, James 3 and verse 2, we can be accepted in the beloved, complete in him, and accepting what he did on Calvary gives me immediately the verdict of the last judgment. It gives me immediately eternal life. I have it now. I don't have to wait. It'll be realised and experienced after resurrection. But legally, every believer has eternal life. This good message is summed up in the word justification, which does not mean to make righteous. The word with its roots is used about 200 times in the New Testament, whereas other words like reconciliation and propitiation only occur about four or five times. This is the key word, justification, and it does not mean to make righteous. It means to declare righteous. And so the good news of the gospel is you don't have to be good to be saved. You come just as you are, and you're accepted just as you are, but you're not left as you are. The Holy Spirit comes to live in you, And happily and gladly you set out to obey God with many mistakes and many failures. But God is more willing to forgive sin than we are to commit it. All our sins are only like a drop in a bucket compared with the ocean of the love of God. All our mistakes, all our evil deeds, only like the fine dust of a balance compared with the mountains of the mercy of God. God's a God of mercy and love. He wants us. He has a place for us all. The um, Living Bible translates the key verses of Romans, chapter 3, 21 to 25, like this. Now do you see it? No one can ever be made right in God's sight by doing what the law commands. The more we see of God's laws, the clearer it becomes. We aren't obeying them. This is Romans 3. You're not saved by doing what the law says. The more we see them, 
more convinced we aren't obeying them. But now God has shown us a different way to heaven, not by being good enough, but by trusting Jesus Christ to take away, take away our sins. And we can all be saved in the same way. doesn't matter who we are or what we've done. They're the key verses of Romans, Romans 3, 21 to 25. In the fifth chapter, it says that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God. Now, this is an important point, Peter. The whole world was redeemed at Calvary. Romans 5 says, as condemnation came upon all men because of the sin of one, so justification has come upon all men by the righteousness of one, the second Adam, Jesus Christ. But it must be accepted. So in John chapter 3, you have three uses of the word must. You must be born again. Here's a decent, living, respectable religious leader told you cannot see heaven until you're born again. You must be born again. When Henry Drummond wrote Natural Law in the Spiritual World, a great book, the first chapter is Biogenesis, where he says there have always been two views about how life began, that it came out of the dirt. It came up spontaneously generated. He says, that's dead now. Science now says, no, only life can beget life. Same spiritually. We're born dead in the first Adam. We're born inclined to evil. We still have an evil heart after conversion, according to Romans 7, but it doesn't dominate anymore. Sin remains, but it cannot reign. That's the difference. But Romans 3 says, while we're yet sinners, we were reconciled to God. How? Second must, John 3. As Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever, New Testament's full of whosoevers, you're a whosoever, Peter, I'm a whosoever, whosoever believeth, that's not Calvinism, that's not predestination, that's the gospel. And Romans 5 says, by the death of one, justification has come upon all men, but it must be accepted. How is it accepted? When you see that Christ loved us. When you see he loved us enough to take our guilt. He loved us enough to be separated from his Father. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 2 Corinthians 5.14 If one died for all, then all died. Everybody died in their substitute and representative at Calvary. We all died then. Do get it. 2 Corinthians 5.14 If one died for all, then all died. Now that's the gospel. And when it says in Romans 3, why are we yet sinners? Why are we sinners? We were reconciled before we've believed. The whole world's been redeemed, but we must accept it. Then the third must in John 3 is, he must increase and I must decrease. According to the book of Romans, even after conversion, sin struggles, sin erupts, Things I would, I do not. Things I would not, those I do. He doesn't mean murder or adultery or theft. He means I don't love enough. I don't trust enough. I don't serve enough. But then in Romans 8 it says, but there's no condemnation. And it ends with there's no separation. People ought to read very closely Romans 8. It lists a lot of bad things. It's these things may threaten you, they cannot dominate you anymore. Romans 8 gives about 20 of them, things that threaten us after conversion, but can't dominate us anymore while we're looking to Jesus. And so it starts with no condemnation. And it goes on to war and guilt and poverty and separation. There are about 20 things that says, these will threaten you, but looking to Jesus, you're accepted. You're complete in him. And so, a thousand falls don't separate me from God. If I love Jesus, if I respond to what he's done, I am accepted. There are only two religions in the world. <clears throat> Many people think there are hundreds. That's not true. One religion 
says, look at my works. I'm better than my neighbour. If anyone's going to go to heaven, I'll go because I'm a decent, respectable person. Look at how I live. The other religion comes like a naked man with empty hands and says, Lord, I am a sinner, but I accept your grace and I thank you for your promise that whoever comes to you, you'll in no wise be rejected. The first religion lives by law. The second religion lives by grace. The law convinces us of sin. It can't deliver us from sin. Only grace can. Paul begins and ends his epistles with grace. When you read the most important private letter that was ever written, the letter to Philemon, he has a runaway slave who's stolen from his master and Paul writes a letter to the master. Receive him as myself. Whatever he owes you, I will pay it to you. That's a picture of the gospel. Christ takes you and me. Thieves, we've stolen from God. Use time for ourselves. Use our talents for ourselves. Use our money for ourselves. We're like Anisimus. We're runaways. We're slaves to sin. But Christ takes us to the Father and he says, Receive him as myself. Whatever he's done wrong, put that on mine account. I will repay it. And so the best news in the world, Peter, is the message of the love and mercy of God. That's the greatest song that anyone can sing. Mm. To know that he's for us, even when we're against him. And that we cannot be lost except by our own deliberate choice but we can be saved by trusting Jesus the word belief comes from two English words by live by live belief and to be a Christian is to live by Jesus Christ with many a stumble many a fall I told you the statement in Ninth Testament somewhere around 220 we ourselves are stumbling and falling failing in speech and action to represent Christ, falling and rising again, despairing and hoping. That's true even of the converted Christian, but is accepted. There's no condemnation and there's no separation because he loves us even at our worst. We must never forget that he is more willing to forgive sin than we are to commit it. May God write Calvary on our hearts. Mm. Powerful stuff. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Des. God bless you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> 